thunder of jets and an open sky, a streak of gray, and a cheerful... Ah! A loop, a whirl, and a vertical climb, and once again, you'll know it's time for the adventures of... Rocky and Bullwinkle and friends. Starring that supersonic speedster, Rocket J. Squirrel, with his pal, Bullwinkle the Moose, and a host of others. Hurry, Bullwinkle! The show's about to start! I'm coming as fast as I can! Wait to the people! Yay! Now what are you doing? Sign an autograph! The thief. John Smith. But your name is Bullwinkle. I know, but that's hard to spell. We're going to have a lot of fun. Come on and join us. Sure, there's always room for one more. question about it, ask any senior citizen residing in Frostbite Falls what the major event of the year is, and he'll reply... The Frostbite Falls Flotilla Festival. And why is that? Because all the noisy kids are down at Veronica Lake. Ah, peace, it's loudmouth butterfly. You really couldn't call it a lake, it's more of a pond. That is, well, actually, I guess you'd call it a sump. At any rate, every boy in the general area had his boat ready to sail. Bullwinkle, you can't enter the race. I'd like to know why not. The rules clearly stipulate no human over ten can participate. I'm about as inhuman as you can get. You're a moat. And that's another reason. Oh, see, there's the warning whistle advising all us marinators to ready sail. Where'd you get that thing? What thing? What it is you're about to launch. And the starry-eyed moose related the story in flashback form of how one day, while ambling along the old rocks road, he stumbled onto an ancient rust-encrusted dhow. Dhow about that. A dhow, spelled D-H-O-W, is a sailing vessel primarily used in the Red Sea and Indian Ocean. Well, she sure is dirty. Yes, but she's your. The starting signal was given and 48 trim little boats put out to sea, or sump, all except Bullwinkles, which sank upon contact with the water. She sank! Yarr. It doesn't matter who won the race. What does matter is that the Dow emerged completely rejuvenated. Wow, look at it sparkle. And looky here on the binnacle rock. That's the bow. It says, Omar. Goodness? Kayam. Omar Kayam. Hokey smokes, what do you suppose it means? Only the library could provide the answer. Oh, pardon me, ma'am, but could... Shh, can't you read? But we don't smoke. It says silence. Oh, that darn cat, always stomping around. Scat! <coughs> now what is it? Boats, books on boats. Yarr. Aisle 842, lane 30, district 3, shelves 20 to 80 inclusive. Well, it wasn't easy, but some six hours later, they cornered their quarry. Oh, my gosh, two copies of the Ancient Mariner. By Al B. Truth. Suddenly, the setting sun bounced its rays off the glittering dow. This gave the resourceful flying squirrel an idea. It shines like a gem. Say... Come on! The reigning authority on minerals, valuable and otherwise, was Digger Deeper, mine owner, prospector, and babysitter on Saturday nights between 8 and 12. It's a gem, all right. Might be fool's gold. This is rad. Fool's gold is gold. Let me give it a closer look. Hand me my loopy. <whistles> see, I never saw this one before. You boys want to see? We, we sure don't do have time, Digger. Come on, Bullwinkle. And the insistent squirrel led the way to the only jewelry store in Frostbite Falls. You know what you have here? We were hoping that you'd tell us. This little dow here is composed of ruby. Yes, sir, it's rubies. No, it isn't. It's mine. Well, my gosh, if it's made out of rubies, then... If you're hesitating for me to finish the line, you've got a long wait. And I don't have the guts to say it. Okay, then here goes. If it's made out of rubies, then this must be the ruby yacht of Omar Khayyam. 
Tom. Mm. And with that little gem, we ring down the curtain. What does fate have in the jewelry store? Be with us next time for Let's Drink to the Ruby or Stoned Again. Our present peccadillo was launched on the sandy shores of Veronica Lake. Every boy under ten and one moose had a sailing ship entered in the annual Frostbite Falls Flotilla Festival. They're off in sinking. Yes, Bullwinkle's boat plunged to the bottom. Ah, uh, but when salvaged... It glitters, it gleams. Actually, it took the trained eye of a master jeweler to determine its true identity. First of all, it's running a little slow. It's not a watch, it's a ship. I stood watch on a ship. Mainspring sprung, too. Please, mister, can you tell us what this boat is made of? And if you say sugar and spice... Ruby. This little object is composed of precious ruby. And since the name inscribed on the pinnacle was Omar Khayyam... Then this is the ruby yacht of Omar Khayyam. Well, you just don't come up with an awful thing like that and not hit the front page. Huxtray, read all about it. Rocket hits moon. Wally out for season. Today's big headline. The birth of 24 caterpillars to a moth in Elizabeth, New Jersey. I thought the narrator said we'd hit the front page. We did. The front page of the one ads. See? Moose will sell Ruby Yacht of Omar Khayyam to any interested party. I said I wanted to sail the Ruby Yacht at an interesting party. Well, that's the press for you. Well, I sure hope nobody reads this. A vain wish, I'm afraid, for halfway across the world in the northern section of lower East Pakistan, the ruler of a remote city perused the ad with more than casual interest. Son of an infidel. Eater of vegetables. What troubles you, O oh illustrious one? This what I peruse in the periodical. For years I wait for the artist to paint pupils in the eyes of little Orphanani. Patience, O oh great one. Rome was not built in a day. What kind of a... Oh! 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 Looky, looky, looky! Oh! Ha! Ha! Fearing that the Pasha was suffering from a stroke, the Grand Vizier pulled the bell cord. Someday I gotta get that fixed. Oh, oh boy, what did I read? Something in the paper? You saw something that would cause such a catastrophic... Ooh, they... Sure enough, it was the misquoted ad they saw. Take 30 bags of gold, 90 bars of silver, buy the ruby yacht. A command is like an order. And listen well, my dear vizier, unless you buy the yacht, you lose your head. Not to mention other various awful things that will happen to you. I comprehend, O oh felicitous one. Fear not, I will beg borrower steal the sacred ruby yacht. Incidentally, what would you suggest as a starting price for my initial offer? A buck and a half. You can always go up from there. A fast camel, a slow train. It took a great deal of time to affect the passage from Pakistan to Frostbite Falls, Minnesota. Eventually, however, the turbaned emissary approached our hero's home. Oh, boy, look at the headache that fella's got. That's a turban, Bullwinkle. A buck and a half. I'll make it two. Two fifty. I think you're down because I got most of the trump. Say, what's going on here? And the vizier made his final offer. No, sir, Turhan B. My little ship is not for sale at any price. You won't relent? Well, not here in the front room, I won't, no. Then look behind you. And there, scimitars in hand, stood 20 fierce soldiers. Uh-oh, there may be some cutting up going on around here. Don't miss our next installment. Rimsky and Korsakoff go to Palm Springs or Song of Indio. Well, it may not have been in your newspaper, but there it was on the front page of the Frostbite Falls Far-Flung Flyer. And you can see why it's called Far-Flung. Boy, look at the headlines. Moose uncovers long-lost ruby yacht of Omar Khayyam. <laughs> Pretty little doodad, isn't it? Sure is, and it must be worth thousands. A low estimate to be sure, especially to the ruler of a certain remote city in lower North Pakistan. For years, the ruby yacht floated in this sacred bathtub. It was our talisman. What's a talisman, oh grandiose one? Okay, let's just say it was our good luck token. You desire this humble grand vizier to recover the ruby yacht, oh esteemed one? Let me put it this way. If you don't recover Rubiat, I shall be an esteemed off one. And as we close the episode that came before this one, the vizier was trading hotly with a reluctant moose. I give four Roger Maris baseball cards for yacht. Not even if you throw in Leo de Rocher. I give warped LP of Jen Pierce singing Bluebirds of Happiness. Not even for Mildred Pierce. Yes, apparently the ruby yacht had gotten under Bullwinkle's skin. And the same might be said for our swords. Hokey smokes, we're surrounded. Rocky wasn't about to take this socked in. Make for the door, Bullwinkle. 
Alas, they were both on the same track. Minutes later, the vizier and his burly aides paraded our captive heroes out of town. What's the parade for, Featherby? Don't know. Must be Labor Day or something. I wish it were Doris Day. How about some cribbage? But not all the good folk of Frostbite Falls were taken in. An aroused citizens' committee was formed to investigate the blatant abduction. I've wired the Secretary of State and the U.N. I phoned the gas company. I propose we march on Washington. Shucks, he's been dead for years. It was then that Miss Plumfort, the principal of PS12, spoke up. I always said that Bullwinkle would wind up bad. Any boy that wears antlers in school. Luckily, Miles Standoffish, the turkey farmer, entered the meeting. I don't know what all the fuss is. Shuckins, they'll never get out of the country. What makes you figure that, Miles? Well, you got a moose, a squirrel, six soldiers, and one grand vizier. That's vizier. Uh, yeah. Anyways, the customs men will spot that group for sure. Sure enough, the United States Customs Bureau had every port, every airfield, every train depot saturated with steely-eyed customs agents. Just a moment, sir. What's in that base violin case? Oh, just some Tommy guns and a bunch of stolen money. That's all, copper. Okay, just checking, that's all. Part of my job. Say, Barney, what is it we're supposed to keep an eye out for again? I told you. Moose, a squirrel, six soldiers... And a partridge in a pear tree, right? No, a grand vizier. Suddenly, the whistle of the SS Plankton announced its departure. That boat, did you check it? No, I thought you did. From gangplank to the wheelhouse, the luxurious ocean liner was given a thorough going over. However, passengers and crew alike were given a clean bill of health. All but one stoker. You have scurvy, sir. Get off the boat and eat some oranges. You saw nothing suspicious, eh, Fred? Only thing that bothered me was the ship's orchestra. Boy, are they corny. That is very understandable. Okay, we take it from the top, and please, no clinkers in the reed section. Bullwinkle, we gotta make a run for it. What, and miss my solo? Besides, I can't run very far. Strained your leg? No, they chained my leg. Well, it looks like a long, frustrating passage for our boys. Whatever's on your list, postpone it for The Malady Lingers On, or... I bought you violence for your furs. Well, last time, Rocky Bullwinkle and the Ruby Yacht were marched out of Frostbite Falls under armed guard. We take you back to remote city in Pakistan for terrible swift punishment. Couldn't you just give us two demerits and let it go with that? Silence! As might be expected, the citizens of Frostbite Falls quickly summoned help. Well, Sergeant, what do you and your men suggest? I think we better call the police. Not only the local law enforcement agencies, but the federal as well were called in to block any attempts at fleeing the country. Sir, there are 60 young girls here who claim they're supposed to swim in the Olympics. 60, eh? Hold them for questioning. What kind of questioning? Telephone numbers, you know. What about the moose, the squirrel, the grand vizier? Let them get their own girls. Meanwhile, at Pier 62, the SS Plankton pulled away from the wharf. Captain, the Customs Bureau searched the ship and found nothing suspicious. Excellent. Oh, by the way, tell the engineer to oil those engines. Terrible racket. But the engines weren't responsible. The blame lay with Guy Vizier and his tremulous troubadours. From the beautiful rumpus room of the good ship Plankton overlooking the blue specific in the heart of downtown Jersey City, he's the captivating melodies of the makes you want to wretch music man himself. Yours truly is no one else. Guy Vizier, with a sparkling, scintillating two and a half minutes of toe-tapping harmonies, coming to you indirectly from the locker room of the SS Andrea Doria. Just a short drive from Pier 86 atop the penthouse showroom in East Side, West Side. Here now is number one singer, gorgeous Georgia Peach, who asked the musical question, Tippy Tippy Teen? Bullwinkle, we gotta jump overboard before we're too far out to sea. Not yet, Rock. I got an arrangement coming up in the next set. Look, if you're worried about the chains on your legs, don't. Well, I must admit, they did cross my mind. Ah, but Rocky had a plan. Sure enough, during his bass solo in Four Brothers, the resourceful squirrel attached a hacksaw to his bow and by bar 32 had sawed through their fetters. You can imagine the vizier's surprise when at the start of a five-minute break, Rocky and Bullwinkle dashed from the room. Quick, the dogs are escaping. Shuttleboard games, sun deck bathing, all were shattered by the ensuing wild chase. Hey, what's going on here? Somebody requested running wild, and two of my boys took it literally. There they go. The pursuit lasted well into the wee hours of the night. They got to be somewhere on this tub. 
Oh, well, we pick up Chase at dawn. Phew, lucky for us they didn't look in this lifeboat. Yeah, we sure are lucky. A questionable statement for the engine room was having trouble maintaining full speed. As I understand it, the ship is overloaded. We must either jettison the lifeboat or the passengers. What do you suggest? Don't ask me, sir. Why not flip for it? Heads, passengers, tails, lifeboat. It came up tails, and wouldn't you know, the lifeboat to be sacrificed was the very one our lads were in. He seems to be getting a trifle heavy, Rook. Ah, it's probably a minor squall. Get some sleep. Careful there, men. You don't want it to land in the water upside down, do you? What should matter? There's nobody in it. But, George, you're right. Throw it over. He seems to be getting a trifle heavy, Rock. You said that. Oh, we may be on the brink of a terrible tragedy. Only way to find out is to join us next time for The Deep Six or It's Tough to Fathom. Last time, you must recall, Rocky Bullwinkle and the ruby yacht of Omar Khayyam were smuggled out of the country aboard the SS Plankton. Oh, yes, the mastermind behind this daring plan was the Grand Vizier, or Guy Vizier, as he is now known. Boy, what I wouldn't give just to hear a chorus of Kashmiri love song. During a vocal rendition of Prisoner of Love, Rocky hacks out their way to freedom. Hey, what's coming off in the reed section? Our fetters, that's what. The Grand Vizier and his soldiers gave chase, but the one place they neglected to search was a lifeboat on sea. I think we're safe. I think you're right. They were both wrong, for the SS Plankton was up to its plimsoll line in cargo, and something had to be tossed overboard. What'll it be, passengers or lifeboat? Passengers! Well, we couldn't get away with it on a kid's show, so it was the lifeboat they jettisoned. The one occupied by Rocky and Bullwinkle. Uh, no thanks, Rock. I'm not thirsty. What do you mean you're not thirsty? Well, didn't you just open a canteen and spill some water? Hokey smoke, we're foundering, and we're upside down in the water. Boy, if there's one thing you got, Rock, it's perception. It wasn't easy, but through sheer superhuman moose power, the boys managed to right their craft. Uh-oh, fog's coming in. Who cares? New York is in that direction. Row, Bowwinkle, row hard. The moose complied for all he was worth. Alas, what he didn't know was that a mooring cable had snagged the prow of the lifeboat. Therefore, no matter how hard he pulled, the boat went right along with the SS Plankton. Stroke! Stroke! I'm stroking! I'm stroking! Two weeks later, the lifeboat stopped, just as the fog and their spirits lifted. There it is, Bullwinkle, New York City! Yeah! Statue of Liberty, Empire State Building, India Inc. Company... India, India Inc. Inc. The realization that they had been towed all the way to the harbor of Bombay suddenly sank in. I think I shall now be sick. Don't waste it. Wait until you reach our remote city. And that word remote fit most aptly, for high in the Pakistan hills, nestled snugly amid giant boulders, sat the small but exceedingly remote city of Jaipur, whose very name struck terror in the hearts of peaceful men. The Pasha who ruled this tempestuous town had no mercy with those who transgressed against tribal laws. But you merciless one. I didn't swipe this ruby yacht. You did too. For eons and eons, it floated in this sacred shrine. Looks more like a bathtub. That's what it is. Anyways, as long as it floated, the city of Jaipur had good luck. And you mean when it was taken, you had bad luck? Twelve months of steady monsoons. That's a lot of rain, Jack. Yes, I call that bad luck. But you said the ruby yacht disappeared 400 centuries ago. You got sharp ears for a squirrel. Well, listen here, Pasha. I'll have you know I am not 400 years old. I should take your word for it. Take him out and cut off his... Uh, no, that wouldn't hurt him. Aha! Ooh, ooh! Throw him in the cobra pit. The seconds later, Bullwinkle stood swaying at the rim of a pit, while below a covey of cobras watched evilly. We will teach you the error of false pride. See, weren't you in Gunga Din? Over you go! No, no! Wait a minute. Actually, we have to wait more than a minute because we've run out of time. Does Rocky have something up his sleeve? Uh, a fur? We'll find out in the new Delhi Katessin or Judgment at Bloomberg's. Well, you're just in time for what might be a very unhappy ending. In our preceding installment, Rocky and Bullwinkle assumed they were rowing back to New York, only to discover that they had been towed all the way to Bombay. The Grand Vizier escorted our heroes to the hard-to-find city of Jaipur. Uh, one of the few times in this story we haven't come up with a bad pun. Moose, squirrel, meet His Highness Nas the Pasha. 
I do not wish to offend either of you offendees, but would you mind divulging which one of you pilfered the ruby yacht? Oh, yes, the little ship that had been stolen from that sacred bathtub 400 centuries ago. And ever since, we've had a plethora of ill fortune. Plethora? A whole bunch. Now, who took the yacht? I took it, but it isn't my yacht. I mean, it is my yacht, but I took it. That is, I know, marshmallows. There were two ways of dying in Jaipur. Just living there and being cast into the dreaded cobra pit. This was to be Bullwinkle's punishment. Shame it isn't the end of an episode. We could use Fangs for the Memory as a title. <laughs> Never mind the shop talk. Walk over into the pit. Look, if I have to go this way, those snakes can walk over to me. Silence, thief of thieves. Push him in. Stop! Stop! What do you mean, stop? You can't say stop when we're about to push Moose over. What is wrong with you? I said stop, and I mean stop. He said stop. How about that? Well, no one had ever said that before, so they all adjourned to the throne room, leaving the snake pit behind. Goodbye, Olivia. Now, what gives with all this stop jazz? Your eminence! Your majesty! Skip the flattery. We all know I'm great. We demand a fair trial! You're kidding! We don't have fair trials here. We don't have any trials. Rocky threatened to shot more stops, so a trial was agreed upon. Counselor for the accused, Rocket J. Squirrel! What'll we do, Perry? Plead self-defense? First off, you throw a fit! But, Bullwinkle, this was easy. <laughs> While this was going on, Rocky, unnoticed, grabbed a sheet of paper, shaped it into an unreasonable facsimile of the ruby yacht, and sprayed some lacquer on it. Amazing set of coincidences, isn't it? You can quit now, Bullwinkle. Ooh, uh, uh, I'm all cured. Mr. Pasha, my client did not steal your ruby yacht. In fact, nobody did. I object. That's in the material and an elephant. Overruled. You see, the real ruby yacht was here all the time in the bottom of the sacred bathtub. With duck maneuvering that only a flying squirrel could do, Rocky brought up the yacht. You mean it sank 400 years ago? Exactly. Okay, doc, wise guy, what is ruby yacht moose had? This one? Nothing but paper. Days later, aboard the SS Plankton's return voyage... That shoot was quick figuring, Rock, manufacturing a dummy yacht and planting the real one in the tub. But I still don't know how you did it. Look, Bullwinkle, just do me a favor. Don't enter any more boat races. Oh, never fear. Next year, it's the marble shootout. I won't even come close to winning. Why do you say that? Well, look at my marble. It's all oblongish and not the least bit round, and it's got the word hope on it. Hokey smokes! That might be the Hope Diamond. Well, at least it won't be hopeless then, eh, Rock? <laughs> Rock? Rocky J! Ooh, Rock! <laughs> Our time has just about run out. Hmm, mine must be a little slow. You got the credits, Bullwinkle? All on this itty bitty card. Oop. Right. Bye now. See you next time.